Well, 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 welcome back and wish you a happy Tuesday, a late Tuesday morning as I've just uh, woken up from my from my nice little slumber, getting enough sleep, finally just catching up on that. But as always, want to be wishing you well, want to be wishing you the best, the best, the happiest, the happiest, whatever whatever good things you want in your life right now, I'm wishing for you that right here, right now. And let's get into live scene as Bitcoin has had significant actions within the last day, so we got plenty of new things to talk about. And first things first, I wanted to note that the daily 89 exponential has provided the impetus for resistance or right around there, again, not quite getting there exactly. But close enough is close enough. Doesn't need to be exactly perfect. And overall, so far, I would interpret that as a rejection. More importantly, what we were looking at on live stream last night was the pink 200 simple moving average on the um, on the 12-hour Dolo time frame. And we actually did close below it, um, healthily below it, actually about uh, about 10 bucks below it, which is good enough for me. And yes, while Bitcoin did take a step up above this area, it does make me confident that th that we're likely going to face resistance and probably grind this area for a little bit of time, but ultimately um, consolidate a little bit lower now we'll be fleshing out this idea but of course you know the mark doesn't happen in one fucking you know in, in, in a one hour dildo it doesn't happen in a five five minute dildo it doesn't happen in a fucking four hour dildo it doesn't even happen in a day dildo but but I want to put that in perspective because the four hour right here was the big news of yesterday when we looked at this and we saw that hey uh, you do have a golden cross in the four hour dildo time frame the first time since uh, what was it September perhaps of last year, that was a big deal. And we actually have already seen about a 10% move from bottom to top off this guy. Yeah, a little bit above that actually, about 11 and a quarter percent, which is pretty damn good. Now, why is this why is this relevant? Why am I mentioning this? Well, I actually want to go back in time and see what the historical, uh, you know, historically speaking, what it's done given this, uh, th this golden cross. So again, that is a green 55 and the purple 200. This has only happened uh, a few times in the last year. The last time being this guy right here in September. Yeah, it was September. Um, this one was very short-lived, so this is an example of uh, perhaps a weaker one, I would say. And again, about a nine percent, a nine percent move from bottom to top. And this was done over the course of about five days. So we've we're literally just a little over a day after getting this uh, four-hour total golden cross, and the response has already been greater. So that tells me that this is a more, you know, it, it comparatively speaking, it's stronger and probably gonna. I'd, I'd imagine it probably does last a little bit longer. Um, now, of course, I'm just measuring it to when Bitcoin actually did really start to turn down. You know, the actual death cross on top of that wasn't for another like day or two, um, which will be the next big impetus for me looking for a directional short. As I don't believe that the lows are in. To be very clear, I've been getting asked this question a shit ton. Um, if you want the full on explanation, if you want like an hour's worth of dedicated content describing why I don't believe the bottom is in, go check out the playlist out of long term analysis. But to put it very bluntly and put it and put it very lightly. All six or seven things that I look for for a major mark cycle low are not present on Bitcoin. I don't see the volume that I want to see. I don't see the reaction I want to see. I don't see the time spent at the low that I want to see. I don't see uh, the return to the low is very, 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 very unnerving as well. The longs and shorts data is pretty much opposite of what I want to see, which we'll get into in just a little bit. The MBT signal also not giving us a low and also the historical volatility rank also not really where marks typically bottom. So again, uh, let's go back to the let's go back to those four hour golden golden dildo uh, crosses. All right, so so the one before that was a much more powerful one. So I do want to give an example of what it you know of of the full potential of this bitch. And uh, and actually, I mean, it could be it could be even more. We'll go we'll go through an even greater one than this. But basically, a what is this? Almost a thirty percent move from bottom to top and from turnaround. That was about four about thirteen fourteen days, uh, as you can see. So almost thirty percent move. That was that was a pretty damn powerful one in the overall context of a downtrend, which is you know which is the big thing to keep in mind right now. Yes, we are still making lower lows and lower highs. Um, right over here, we do have our time before that, which was in May. Again, a 25%, uh, 25.5% um, uh, pump up. And once it started turning down, that was about 18 days. 18 days, depends where you kind of take it, 18 to 20 to 22-ish days. So let's just say 20 days. Um, but, you know, essentially two to three weeks. I mean, three weeks, essentially. Uh, the time before that was more of a fake out, uh, but, you know, a very weak one. It's completely different posture than what we're looking at right now. This was a 12, 12 and a quarter percent move 12 and a half percent move and took about five days as well kind of like on par with the with the last week one before that we hadn't really ever seen one um because it was golden crossed all the way from about four thousand here to essentially twenty thousand from the way that i look at it and that was obviously over the course of about half a year or so so yeah, it does certainly hold a lot of weight. And what we're looking at right now, the fact that this has had such a, such a great response in basically the first day, and I believe it still is, uh, or we're still within like day two, huh? Yeah, we, it's got to be, right? Yeah, about oh, almost two days now. 
um, does suggest that this is going to be probably more of a powerful one. Uh, so, you know, I'm not saying that it's going to definitely get to like this amount of percent. No, I'm just showing guidelines for what it can look like and what to kind of uh, historically look for. So again, would it match up with any of our other resistances? Well, putting on back on the daily and actually we don't really have, don't really have any, any other major exponentials coming around that range. But if we do put on our drawing tools, we can see very obviously that there is the next big horizontal resistance right here, which is going to be around 40, let's call it about 4130, which will also be, by the way, where the weekly 200 exponential uh, does indeed lie. And this is something that's going to be very important to me, this this purple 200 exponential moving average on the weekly. Keep in mind, as a higher time frame, this is probably the most preliminary thing that holds the most weight. Of course, this still needs to, you know, still needs to wait for an actual week for it to, you know, be confirmed or denied. But as long as Bitcoin is both opening and closing weekly totals below this area. Nothing really significant has changed as far as I'm concerned. I'm really not even, will, I, I wouldn't even consider that 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 the low is in or anything like that, or, or we're even going to have like a major rally back to 5,000, like I think a lot of people are showing are, are looking for right now. Um, but uh, that is currently coming in around 4150. Now, I'm just curious, but if we were to make a percentage move based off of our current uh, crossing area up to that area, where would that kind of suggest? I mean, where would we kind of be in that percentage move wise? And that'd be right around here. So about 15 and a half percent, 16 percent. So kind of, you know, in the in, in the mid, you know, we, we saw it get as high as about 30 percent. We saw it get as low as about, you know, 8 um, percent. So that kind of start to make a little bit more sense. Now, of course, if we do extend it a little bit further, you know, maybe we could come up with some other things. I think on the weekly, there's another big area of interest on the 21 exponential, which is going to be right around, whoops, hey, get off there, you fuck. Um, the 21 exponential coming in right around uh, a little under uh, 4,500, we'll call it. So I'm just curious. Let's just go back on over here and see where this guy would be coming in around. And the cross happens somewhere right around here. And if we were to drag this out to uh, 45, let's call it. Yeah, that's where we start to get you know a little bit more in line with the more powerful crosses, which um, is, you know, is it on the table? Is it not on the table? I mean, it is, it is on the table, but keep in mind that as long as Bitcoin is below 40, 50, we are just creating lower highs. So the picture would start to slightly change actually. And that would probably come with, come confluent with a weekly total, both opening and closing above the 200 exponential moving average. Now, of course that's not guaranteed, but if that were to happen, that would start to change things just overall for me. And I wouldn't, I, I would actually probably even t start taking some, uh, some longs off that. So Again, um, you know, more traditionally speaking, Bitcoin has to get back above the breakdown area of 6,000 before it's actually, you know, confirmed a full on reversal to give you an idea of where that specific point lies. Of course, we're probably going to know beforehand. There's probably going to be indications beforehand. Um, but if you want the most traditional, the most the most conservative way of doing it, yeah, uh, as long as you're below 6,000, you are still in the heavy grips of bear market territory. That means you could rally up literally a thousand bucks. Um, I mean, more than a thousand bucks, almost two thousand bucks, and uh, and still be in Mr. Bear market mode. So keep these things in mind as the market gets very, 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 very exuberant. In fact, we can actually look at the crypto fear and greed index, which is ticking up to a 63, which is very scary right now. And right now we're going to get into kind of the, the more scary things. Um, 63. I mean, we have not seen this level of excitement since. Since May, you know, the run from 6,000 to 10,000, which was rejected, then what, you know, we also saw a very similar four hour total golden cross. That was actually the impetus for that move getting started as well. Um, as far as, you know, as, as far as my trading um, on that one, I, I think that, yeah, I was, I was, uh, I was recording videos back then. So, so definitely still do have, um, st definitely still do have uh, that sort of evidence up. But basically, what I'm trying to look at over here is, Whenever this thing does get pretty damn high, it does line up with dumps pretty damn well. While it doesn't necessarily call the bottoms all that well, it calls the tops very, very well. When it does get very low, it gives you an idea that, hey, we could be bottoming, we could be... Um, you know, we, we, we could be in for a reversal, but it doesn't give you a good timing on that. I mean, for example, this thing was nosediving all of November to mid-December. So literally a month of it hanging around this very low territory before Bitcoin actually found it, found the current low. Um, before that, you know, an example right over here in, um, in what was it, early August all the way to September, where this thing was just flatlined at the actual low. And Bitcoin didn't get a rally until, you know, middle of September. So it stayed down there for about a month and a half. Just put these things in perspective. Now, more importantly, the spikes to the top are pretty damn consistent with actual big, big tops during this whole um, this whole downtrend. 
the highest point that you see over here this was your february lows this highest point over here that you see this was your may um this was sorry this was not your may this was not your february lows this was, this was your february highs you know the 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 double top to 12000 this was your may high to the the uh, the top at 10000 this was your late july high which was your top at 8000 i believe it was uh your september high your november high before you know the ultimate dreams drop down from 6000 to 3000 and then once again we've gotten you know we've gotten pretty damn high now we've actually gotten above the last few times in fact we're getting very damn close to you know that may one to 10000 which i was just speaking on so again uh i was looking at this before as having like a regression line between uh, uh between the tops as some sort of a uh, some sort of a res resistance trend line, if you are looking at it like that, it, it it would technically be broken as we are we are very obviously taking it out right now. But I don't necessarily know if that's the right way to be doing it. I don't know if trend lines necessarily work on something like that. This, but we do know that anytime you get above fifty, um, a fifty marker on this guy, it has each and every fucking time lined up with a major top. Let's combine that with a few other things. Let's go look at the longs and shorts. Sort of all longs are at around twenty-eight thousand. So we let's actually go down to the charts right now. Longs are at twenty-eight thousand, right? So we lost literally ten thousand longs in one day, perhaps even more than that. Um, I want to get the full on the full on uh, guy right here. Yeah. Um, about 10,000 longs in one fucking day. Now, when price action is going up and you see the margin longs coming down, what does that tell you? Well, it's distribution, right? It's distribution typically done at nice, you know, around tops, around major tops, which is what we saw, you know, in, what was it? This was, this. these were your March highs over here. Do we have the May highs somewhere around here? Some Somewhere around, it's, the, your May highs were right here. Sorry, where is your May highs? Yeah, somewhere, you know, around this crazy area as well. And when you do see this start to come down, that's typically a sign. It's a sign because when you're in an overall up market, people are going to be more inclined to actually hold their longs. Now, of course, you want to be taking profit, but you want to be taking profit at, you know, at, at a right time. When people are taking profit right here below 4,000, that is concerning. That is very concerning because it shows that there's not too much conviction in more up move. I mean, 10,000 longs being taken off of Finex is significant. We were almost at 40,000 longs. So to take off 10,000, is you know almost a quarter of the whole of you know of the whole pot um i mean none of those people are getting liquidated it was all profit I, i'd imagine unless they like really fuck, unless they really fucked up but the fact that they're letting go of it you know right before a prior high you know all that good stuff shows that we are still in bear market territory still people are respecting that area and the people who are holding on to it right now are probably on the on, on the opposite side Let's pair that up with the shorts right pair that with pair that up with these shorts which are below that 20,000 area now below which they are they are actually officially in the red box for the first time since when was this november november you probably remember that one uh, 6000 a 3,000 move right there. Uh, the times before, the, the, the times that I got into there before were the, um, were, were, was the early August dump. That was from 8,000 to 6,000 in a span of like a week and a half. Then before that was your May dump from 10,000 to 6,000. The time, and the times before that were, you know, over here in March on your double top. Um, or sorry, Mar when, what, what was the March highs? Let me go back over here. Uh, March, uh, Oh yeah, in this area, yeah, this last high right here. So again, when these things do get pretty damn low, it has been a phenomenal, a phenomenal indication of major dumps in coming. What you really wanted to see, or what I would, what I would really want to see, if this market was going to continue onwards and upwards, um, and when I say onwards and upwards, I mean like really onwards and upwards, like changing the picture, you know, opening and closing a weekly dildo above that 200 exponential, and also closing a monthly dildo above the green 55 exponential, which I'll actually just quickly show right now, as that uh, as we are significantly above it right now. To be very clear, we are very much above it. Um, but still got it, you know, a couple weeks until the end of the month. So a lot of things can happen before then. And as long as we're essentially below the prior high of the last uh, monthly dildo, we have not done anything different since July of last year. Uh, literally the high of each and every dildo has been the high. I mean, you know, it just doesn't go higher uh, in, the, in, in a very basic sense. I know that's kind of like a crude analysis, but it is it is true. Um, anyways, uh, going back going back to those sorts of things, I just want to show that, 
the overall conviction of the market does not feel like it's there. And looking at the underlying market dynamics does provide some, you know, some hairy statistics. I'm going to go over here to my Dribbit, show my positions. I forgot to do this uh, at the beginning of the stream, but I am, I did get out of most of my, uh, most of my short that I started last night on the, um, on stream. I actually added to it before. I actually added to it, I think a little bit after the stream and then I took profit. Where was it? Uh, on the last down before I went to bed. Uh, can we see this on the screen? Yeah, you can see it right there. You can see 6,000 contracts bought, 30, 38, 45 uh, filled. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, but overall, you know, I don't like to hold positions on my streamer account when I'm sleeping typically, especially ones that are like not necessarily directional trades. Now I do believe that directional trade will show itself, but this, you know, this can also take some time. Um, I, I believe it's going to, I believe it will show itself as I don't believe that the lows are in, but I believe it's going to, you know, I have to be very careful with the way that I relate these ideas. Cause it's been like a little bit of a discrepancy in the past where people will feel like I'm, I'm insinuating that, I, that things are like going to happen today. No, unlikely things are probably going to happen in the next, uh, in the next couple of weeks is what it'd be, is what would be a little bit more likely. So understand that the time frames and the timing of these sorts of things are, you know, when I say soon, that's like two two weeks. I mean, you know, and I, I, over to a month as well. But looking at this area, you know, we're looking at a monthly dodo time frame. So it takes literally one month just to put one of these guys in. So it literally like it's going to take fucking time, man. It's going to take time. The next big piece of the puzzle is going to be where the monthly close. Do we close above or below this green 55 exponential? The first, and we have the relevancy of this is that we have broken it for the first time in Bitcoin's history uh, in January, right? Right over here. And if Bitcoin does close below it, which by the way, it's at 3681 right now, if it does close below it, it'll be the first time that Bitcoin has both opened and closed a monthly dildo below the 55 exponential, which would be incredibly, incredibly powerful as that would be a confirmed kill of, an, of a moving average and likely incite a test down to this next 89 exponential down around here, around a, what is this, 2450? Yeah, about 20, you know, the mid 2000s essentially. Again, these things are probably gonna take a long fucking time, a long, long time, um, just like when Bitcoin was at 6,000 and I was talking about these uh, about these ideas coming down to 3,000 um, you know and people <laughs> I think I think a lot of people got it some people weren't so weren't so happy about it but it took time you know it took it, I, I think I started streaming around March um, last year yeah March it's almost a one-year anniversary by the way that's awesome um, and you know it took about you know Jesus Christ man March all the way to November that's too fucking long. That's eight months. So again, looking at something like that, you understand that markets take their time. Market takes a, markets take a long time. Uh, and it's probably going to take longer and longer. You know, these cycles are going to take longer and longer to play themselves out as time, you know, goes forwards and more people get involved in these. As the market cap gets bigger, as the amount of money in this market becomes larger, it just naturally will take longer to shake, you know, everyone out and settle everything. And, you know, the, the, the books are going to be more are going to be more filled in and all that good stuff. So it's just going to take more time to, like, chew through these sorts of things. Uh, through, chew through these sorts of phases. I mean, you see it right here. Your first phase, really, really, really quick. Second phase, significantly longer, actually. And our third phase, probably going to be even longer than this guy. I mean, remember, this was 2014, 2015, when the market cap of crypto was, you know, peanuts compared to what it is now. And right now, to put in perspective, right now, it is peanuts in compared to something like, uh, to compared to something like gold, which is seven trillion, right? Uh, Bitcoin, not even one trillion. Bitcoin, I believe, is somewhere around a hundred billion, and that might be the. And I believe that that's the whole market cap for every fucking cryptocurrency, which is not too relevant because most of these things are probably just complete bullshit. Not all of them. I'm not. I'm not a full on Bitcoin maximalist, but I am. You know, I. I don't believe that. I don't. I don't believe that every coin is going to be bullshit, but most of them are, and including them in the market cap just kind of you know sets those statistics off. So it's probably even what uh, much lower than that. So let's actually go look at gold really quick. Um, XAUUSD over here. I think. Last Last I looked at gold, I was bullish on this guy, and I'm curious what he's doing right now. Yep, he is definitely bullish. Um, headed up to this next uh, resistance area. Let's see. I think I do have this one charted. Yeah, uh, major resistance right around this uh, 1369 area. But overall, what I want to show on gold is that, man, this is this this doesn't even do it justice. This this chart only goes back to 2006. So to put this into perspective, we're looking at a monthly, right? We're looking at a monthly. This again, seven trillion market cap versus literally under 100 billion for Bitcoin. Um, and look how long this takes. You know, your parabolic cycle is all the way from from what we can see in 06 to, to, to 2011. And then ever since 2011 to right now, it's still just been 
down and consolidating it's still in a bear market overall i mean you're not even in a bull market for a long time on this on this baby but for now it is a little bit bullish and i'm not saying that this is going to break anytime soon either uh 1369 it, it does look like it wants to break to be fair I, I i would be more bullish on this than not but again you know this is literally almost 10 years uh bitcoin has barely even been 10 years old right so Again, these sorts of things do need to be taken into context, and that likely will be the case for Bitcoin going on in the future if he is if he is to be successful. So again, going down in the lower time frames, they are looking a little bit tired here. Um, hourly, uh, hourly RSI giving us some bearish divergence at the top, getting kicked out of the more critical zone, trending below the exponential. Typically, you know, that's gonna. I, while, while I do think that we get another test in this area around, you know, thirty nine, you know, mid 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 to low thirty nine hundreds, I think that uh, I think that it probably does get rejected. You know, we're gonna spend some time grinding this area. You're not just gonna fucking rally all the way up just to you know spike it down the next day. What's likely gonna happen is we're gonna see some sort of distribution like pattern form here and then probably consolidate a little bit lower and at that point we're going to we're going to figure out if this is you know if this rally wants to get um, extended into those low 4000s levels that we just looked at or sorry that we looked at at the beginning of the stream or if um or if we're going to you know actually put in a top here i think it's a little bit less likely if i was looking at the four hour just based off that and again i put the most weight pretty much on exponential moving averages that is what i've spent the most time learning that is this that is that is what you know that uh, uh that is what i'm most experienced in um, but looking at the high time frames, I mean, at the end of the day, we're just printing another lower high, no matter what way you cut it. And this is just another test of the 89 exponential, which we actually haven't seen in a very long time. Uh, the last time that we lost the, X the 89 was here in September on that last major dump before 6,000 breaking. I mean, yes, we did test it here in the, on that October tether uh, scare, but to give you an idea of its relevancy, you know, when Bitcoin kind of comes up and tested, it typically doesn't last there for too long. So again, you know, the underlying market dynamics certainly not lining up with with all suns, you know, rainbows and fucking roses and all that good shit. I'm really struggling to find my words right now. Maybe I need some more sleep. Sorry about that, guys. I do pause about that. But thank you for uh, thank you for bearing with us right now. Um, you know, looking at our, uh, our our other time frames, I'm curious what the six hour stokes are doing. Six hour stokes still headed up. Interestingly enough, um, six hour RSI, no divertus to be had, just straight fucking up. So this would be suggested that you know whether we do give another try higher or lower we probably do we probably do um make another overall run higher so what do i mean by that sorry because that's a very convoluted statement what i mean is you know i i do believe that this area right here is going to be resistance for you know for uh, for, uh, for for now but we probably do consolidate a little bit lower and then try higher and i do believe that this area probably gets taken out probably does get taken out um i did make a trend line going from our last couple of highs within this phase right here uh on middle of december and January and yes it does technically line up with what we're doing right now do I put that much weight on it honestly no honestly no I don't because look at this there's something very interesting to be uh, uh, there's something very interesting to be aware of down around here this volume on yesterday's pump up dildo is pretty damn significant especially for what was a major holiday in the US now I know the US doesn't trade doesn't you know is isn't the only people trading this bitch but it, you know, it, it, it is interesting. And the fact is, is that we don't necessarily have that orderly drop off in volume anymore on a daily. If we go to maybe a two day, it's going to look a little bit different, but I do want to be aware of something like this. Two day, okay, two day looks a lot different, to be fair. Two day looks significantly different. Two day would still be, two day would actually help around out that case that, that we're just putting in a lower high somewhere around this area, whether it's 4,100 or it's, uh, or it's 4,000 uh, as a current high. Um, you know, this this would actually look a little bit more damning. Uh, but overall, you know, I don't necessarily want to be I don't want to be bearish as long as we're above the three day 21 exponential. And as long as we're golden crossing the four hour dodo time frame, those are my two big things right now for like an actual reversal directional trade. You know, you just don't know how long this is going to take to resolve itself. And going over here to the weekly, you know, the weekly did do something interesting with uh, at the beginning of this week. We basically, you know, we basically took out the 10 simple moon average. Now, we did not close above it last week, funnily enough, um, but very, very likely to close above it this week, I'd imagine. And this is probably going to spend, spend some time. We do have it. We do have it now curling back up and around. So that is a good sign as well. And we actually do have our weekly stokes pointed up as well, too. So. There are, you know, what I'm trying to get out here is I'm really trying to hammer in that point that, yes, I am not, I'm not, I'm not bullish thinking like the ultimate lows are in, but I suppose I am not necessarily like bear. It's not the right time to be bearish is what I'm trying to say. 
it's there are certainly a lot of things suggesting that it's you know it's it's relatively around the corner but understand relative time and then more importantly I want to see proof first just like to the downside you know we could do all the fucking mental masturbation possible but until Bitcoin actually breaks 3350 to the downside when we were hanging down around 3400 it wasn't really appropriate to you know look for that directional short down into the mid 2000s by the same token right now you know the you know short uh lower lower time frame also is do you want to go up so fair enough and really as long as bitcoin's above we could call it 3650 now just basically the breakout trend line of this guy which we can put in right now uh oh, nope i'm on the wrong track sorry about that yeah right here at around 3650 as long as bitcoin's above there you know it's it's not really on it's not really on the discussion for like as far as I'm concerned, as far you know, for like a confirmed reversal off the short terms, because short term, short term, we you know, short term we are making higher highs and higher lows, which is an uptrend, but higher time frames obviously not. So again, understand the relationship between these things, and understand that you know that's gonna really, it's I you know, as a trader, I need to see fucking proof. I can have my opinion on things and all that good stuff. But opinions just muddle up the actual information. You know, just like yesterday when I was happy to change around my opinion of Bitcoin pumping as soon as we saw this here. I mean, this was when price was about 36.50 uh, when we caught it yesterday. Um, you know, at, at that point in time, I did get long and I and I rode that one out all the way to where you guys saw yesterday when I, when I entered into that other position. But now it's once again, okay, do you want to try a trade out over here? Well, the, tr the, the time to try a trade was when we looked at it last night, if you wanted for a small scap, or if you got this this formal test right here, 36 or 39.65 on the uh, on the daily 89. So that's gonna be the area of interest going forward. If Bitcoin does take out this area, it's likely to be another quick move to about, you know, 4,050, another $100 move or so. Um, at that point in time, if we go to the daily, what can we get on over here? Yeah, if, if that area gets taken out, I mean, really, is that even a strong resistance? People are probably gonna sell it because it's your prior high, but really your major resistance to be aware of in, in this space would be around that 4150 ish area which is going to coincide with the weekly 200 exponential so again keep in mind the higher time frames and that's really going to be a focus on that that's really what i want to hammer into this uh into this video higher time frames and understand the relation of time between these sorts of things and understand what is needed for the lower time frames to re to confirm a reversal because right now it's like you know, you don't want to get stuck in a short if this thing's going to spend another couple of weeks grinding this area or even higher. Um, and again, if it does grind higher, I mean, I suppose the highest that I could see it going is 45. I don't think it's likely, though. I don't think it's very likely. Uh, what I think is a little bit more likely is somewhere uh, below 4,100, like a test of the 200 exponential on the weekly. But remember, the 200 exponential on the weekly, Bitcoin just needs to close below it in order for this to still be you know, relevant and valid. And that's, again, 4,100. So we could get a wick above. I'd imagine that you know, looking at the monthly and putting the whole picture together, now we're kind of, you know, now I'm kind of... Um, going a little bit more ephemeral into this I, and I want to be honest when I'm not when I'm not fully going off of like super traditional technical analysis but if Bitcoin were to get above the high of this last monthly dildo which again is 4112 which is basically the 200 exponential on the weekly that's where things start to look a little bit different from the uh, from this perspective to me we would have done something that we haven't done in literally uh what is this more than six months more than half a year uh, ever since July so I don't, I don't know how many months that is but close enough to six months or whatever it is uh, almost half a year and that would you know that kind of put on the breakers for me um for likely a move probably higher into the four thousands like the 40 that, that's when like 4500 becomes a little bit more likely but until that happens i will run with the assumption that the 200 exponential on the weekly is going to still you know do its job and basically all we're doing as you can see right here is just playing between the 200 simple and the 200 exponential and that's the pink and the purple and as long as you know as long as bitcoin's within that area it's just consolidation on higher time frames so again it is a little bit enlightening to look at you know our you know our, our, our other higher time frames like a two-day and a three-day because we really don't have that volume that i'm looking for now granted the two day still does have another day for this to go um as we will get another one another new one uh, tonight at 7 p.m eastern eastern standard time but it, as it stands right now it's not necessarily breaking anything that 
crazy. Uh, three day over here. Three day. Three day is going to be very interesting as well. I I have a very difficult time being bearish on something that's going to be above the three day twenty one. Uh, but same thing over here. You know, the the volume characters, the volume signature of this would still be very, 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 very similar. I'm curious though, what are our oscillators saying for these time frames? Yeah, two days, two day stokes are getting back into this range as well. The edge of the bullish control zone. The last couple times, the last three times that we were around this uh, around this range, it actually did line up with some major dumps. This was your again your late December high, your early January high. This was your uh, th this was your this was your August high leading into the September dump. And this over here, well, it wasn't really on the same level, but basically this 60 zone, kind of the edge of the bullish control zone. And the way that I look at this is that, again, telling us that historically speaking, it has been finding a lot of resistance in this area. So keep your eyes on that one as well. But again, all, all it has to be, if you want to make this very simple for yourself, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I'd imagine that probably a lot of people are just like longer term type thinkers. All you have to do is just put a 200 simple and 200 exponential on your chart. That's all you've had to do for the last fucking three months. It's that's literally it. Now, of course, I'm more of a short term uh, time, short time, short term trader. Jesus Christ, man, I really need some fucking coffee. I actually quit drinking coffee for the next week or two. Um, Want to let my system reset, but obviously not working too well with my mouth right now with my mouthpiece. Um, but lower time frame traders, you know, if you're looking at this, yeah, I, I believe that Bitcoin's going to grind this area for a little while and then probably uh, reject from there and consolidate a little bit lower is probably what's likely to happen. And as long as Bitcoin's above 3650, don't really want to be entertaining thoughts of like a full on directional break to the downside. Uh, shit like that. So again, yes, underlying market dynamics do not look good, though. I will say that. Let's go check out Mr. Buterall, the one who led this market to the upside. Uh, vent driven bullshit, which you know you typically know how that how that operates. But a same thing as Bitcoin, you know, hitting this hitting this next uh, this next block of resistance that we were looking at last night on uh, on live stream. I believe that this is also some sort of a fib. Yeah, around the two three six over here. Close enough is close enough. Uh, maybe a little bit. A little bit higher, something like that. Looks about right. Yeah. Um, but overall, you know, as long as you're kind of around this area, yes, there's going to be a lot of people selling this area just because, well, everyone's fucking got their eyes on it. You can see that there has been some initial pressure off this area. Uh, you do see a couple wicks into this, uh, it, um, it, into the block at around 152 and a half. So there is, you know, there, there is some selling going on. There is some good volume on this as well. And I think we're going to have to go down to the lower time frames to really dissect this one. Yeah, when it comes down to the hourly, it looks a little bit more obvious. You know, as long as we're closing hourly dildos above 153, this does look like, you know, similar to Bitcoin, probably grinds this area, probably grinds this area out. I mean, shit, it could get all the way back up to 156, the top of this block right here. And still just, you know, I'd still just kind of consider that the same as like Bitcoin just grinding this area out, but probably going to reject and, and uh, consolidate a little bit lower. Um, what are also saying right now, we do have our hourly stokes actually just having a fresh cross up rejecting getting down below the neutral zone, which is good. Um, uh, uh, hourly RSI not looking as healthy, major, major bearish divergence. I'm curious where the bearish divergence, what time frame it goes up to uh, two hours bearish divergence. What about three hour? Three hour has not really, not really bearish divergence, I would say. Uh, what about four hour? I mean, if the three hour doesn't have the four hours, you're not going to have it either. But yeah, even going back all the way to this pump up over here. Yeah, it's even getting above there. This actually looks kind of healthy right now. Actually, looks kind of healthy right now. But uh, I suppose you could say if you want like something a little bit more concrete, as long as you're below 156, got to be careful. Got to be careful in this range because this is, you know, this is going to be the top of the range. Uh, so again, it's, it's like, what kind of trader are you? Are you like super short term time frames where you, where you're willing to take on a little bit of risk like that? Or if you're a higher term time trader, uh, time frame trader, you're probably not too interested in that unless if it confirms above 156, if it confirms above 156, then nothing's stopping it from the prior high of, a one, of around 169. And then at, at, at that point in time, I really, you know, personally speaking, I don't see really too much stopping it from about 180 to 182, uh, maybe make a little bit of a higher high and do something like, uh, do something like this, right? You know, uh, put in some sort of a major flag pattern coming off the coming off the bottom, which would you know would in, would would kind of suggest a bearish resolution of this. As you can see, some nice resistance coming around this area. But again, remember uh, higher time frame perspective from Mr. Buterall. As long as you're below, what is this? About uh, about 200 bucks, even we call, you know, from a more traditional standpoint, still in a bearish market. Um, and as it stands right now, just making lower highs. Although I'm not necessarily I'm not necessarily convinced that this run is over just yet either. And if this were to turn back down, you will have support right around the 141 range. 
But again, similar to Bitcoin, you know, holding above, uh, what, what was it, 30, 3650, um, the area to beat for Mr. Buterall, if you wanted to talk about like reversal to the downside and it being back in trouble again, would be this area right here, about 127 and a half is what I'd be looking at. All right, let's go look at uh, Mrs. Litecoin. Or actually, I'm curious, what are the higher time frames saying? Do we have, are we, are we rushing up against anything over here? Um, on the daily actually no 89 exponential was destroyed and you're about to get a very very good uh exponential moving average cross on the daily as well that will be confirmed later tonight if this thing ends here or higher which i imagine it likely will there's some pretty damn good volume on this uh, on this pump up so far so i imagine another move probably you know probably light probably in the cards over the next day or two um here we go here we go mrs litecoin there we go mrs litecoin getting back above the 200 simple right now and brushing up right against that area actually so when we spoke about uh when we spoke about king bitcoin and mr buterall both getting to those you know talking about those critical critical areas from a traditional standpoint where the picture actually does change for bitcoin that being six thousand for mr buterall that being about 200 the area for mrs litecoin is actually right around the corner it's about 50 and a half dollars I mean, basically the 200 exponential on the daily, but you actually have taken out the 200 simple. This has not been able to been maintained above ever since April and May highs over here. Now, obviously this was very short lived, but it is worth note. Now, now I know this one is uh, is also event driven, but daily still looks just fresh crossing up. I mean, it's not it's not bad. Daily RSI will likely be giving you some bearish divergence. However, that's that could, that uh, that is certainly of note. And remember, this rising trend line right here, very similar to Mr. Buterall actually finding the last couple tops uh, again in confluence with this blue box. What I'd really be looking at this as is basically about 4850 to to the 200 exponential around 50, you know, a little bit above $50. That's kind of what that's kind of what I got my eyes on right over there. Um, but yeah, keep your eyes on that. As long as it's below there, it's still, you know, it's still in trap territory. It's still in bear market territory. So do want to be careful with that. But the second that it gets back above there, uh, this thing can run. This thing would be able to run. Uh, Fifty-six dollars would be right around the corner, and you know, personal opinion, you'd probably be running towards uh, sixty-three and a quarter. I mean, I'm curious where the weekly is coming around on this guy. Uh, weekly over here. Uh, weekly looks good. Weekly looks good. Continuation is, is 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 all I see right here. Weekly looks good. I mean, week again. Mrs. Litecoin is the best. Um, the best argument for. The bear market being over the way that she's acting right now let's go check out some of the other top market caps i'm curious how they're doing are they participating in this rally this is zcash over here not so much not 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 so much participation nowhere near the 89 exponential like mr bitcoin is what about bcash same thing not so much participate this is not a good sign i mean they they, they are laggards right but at the same point in time it's not it's, it's not good it's not good to be a laggard um tron tron same thing nowhere near in fact this looks a lot like distribution right here uh, I really don't like Tron. Tron versus a dollar. Uh, Neo, Neo, uh, Neo looking better than the other ones, but again, same thing. Major resistance right here, nine dollars and thirty-five cents. Pretty much right, right where we are right now. Needs to get above there. If it can get above there, then we can start talking about. I mean, at that point in time, it's like what's stopping you from twelve, twelve and a quarter. And remember, same, you know, same thing for this, same conversation that we just had, essentially the area to beat for, you know, for getting out of the bearish market is, uh, is about $15 and 30 cents. Still got a lot of work to do is what I want to show. And look at the volume on this as well. Very, very lackluster. This is not too impressive as it stands. So as long as you're below $9 and 30, 37 cents, especially, I'd be very, very cautious on something like this. Very fucking cautious. EOS, I remember EOS was taking up a leg uh, yesterday, actually new, uh, higher highs on the, uh, on the daily right here. So not bad. But that same area coming in around 455. Uh, XRP, XRP getting all the way to the three, uh, 34 and a half cent area that we spoke about yesterday. Holy moly, man. Nice move for XRP. Uh, but again, remember 34 and a half cent is that critical area, critical fucking area for XRP, man. That, uh, that's a nice move that, uh, that is a very nice move actually hitting the measure move off of the special time that we looked at, uh, just about perfectly actually overshot it just by a second. But, uh, remember 30, what is this? Let's say, let's get, let's actually nail it down since we're right there. Uh, it is uh, 34, 34.8 cent. As long as you're below there, do have to be careful. But yes, this does look mm, better than most. Better than most, actually. Let's see. Do we have a trend line coming in here? Yeah, something like that. So maybe we are forming something like something overall like this. Oh, actually, we kind of are forming something like this, aren't we? Something like this, creating some sort of a some sort of a no, an, another uh, triangle. 
Again, volume on this, not too impressive. You know, it's kind of fallen off from left to right. I'm gonna get rid of the smaller, uh, the smaller symmetrical triangle that's already been kind of uh, played out, it looks like. But hey, as long as you're below this area, be careful. If it does get above this area, then yeah, uh, probably have a little bit of a run party. You know, maybe like uh, almost to 40 cents is, uh, is kind of where I'd look for. Um, let's go over, I think that covers up all the altcoins right now. Uh, did I cover up anything? everything? Uh, Fear and Greed Index, uh, Longs and Shorts, got that, got that. GBDC opening up later today. Oh, I should also show this. Uh, GBTC, very important as well. Closed last week, um, kind of on a sour note at uh, 419. Now, again, with the premium, that would, that would be all the way down around 3550. So there will be a major gap on this, uh, assuming that Bitcoin does not turn down around, you know, in the six or so hours between now and uh, and open for, grit, for, for OTC markets. So, hey, keep your eyes on that. There will be a massive gap um, on the downside. More importantly, we're actually probably going to open up on and fill the gap from from early January, right? The January highs over here. So probably going to be a sell on that first pass and also kind of adding into the adding into the uh, into the story that, you know, if, if I am looking for a short term pullback, this is likely the area. This is likely the area. Um, does it pull all the way back down to fill the gap at thirty five fifty? I would say that that would. That would immediately, impl if that were to happen, that would immediate impl immediately imply that <laughs> this would be the major top. <laughs> you know, major top meaning like this thing's probably gonna, you know, break down to new lows from here. But uh, obviously, that's well and far away. That's well and far away. Thirty-five fifty, very, you know, <laughs> way out of the way out of the mind right now. As you know, as for now. But the more important thing, of course, is we're probably gonna open up on this gap right here and probably gonna sell off of that as gaps typically do. So keep that one in mind. We will have one a little bit overhead as well over here, um, 523. Where would that equate to on spot charts given the premium? I believe that would be somewhere around, actually 44.50. Interestingly enough, that'd be around 44.50. So fair enough. Um, yeah, that's that. Uh, that could be of note. That could be of note. Now, OTC bullshit. I'm not. I I can't verify myself that OTC bullshit always fills gaps. I can in traditional markets because that's where I come from. That's where I've actually spent time looking at it. And just looking at the past in GBDC, there has been gaps that have been on. You know, there uh, at at around twenty thousand that are just not going to get. They're probably not going to get filled for GBDC. Or whatever its premium is equated to at that at that point. So again, is it you know is it that relevant? I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure. I'd be less uh, less le uh, less inclined to say than I would for traditional markets, which we'll be able to watch today as well as they'll be opened up later today. And on traditional markets, um, traditional markets, I'm still I'm still short term bullish here. I don't really see any reason not to be. Uh, last week's close was very strong. Last daily close was very strong. Uh, Stokes up daily RSI up and not not even taking any prisoners right now. Weekly RSI just getting out of the neutral zone um, and going to be reaching for the bullish zone pretty damn soon. And also last week we had a phenomenally good close and also we very likely will unless we have like an uh, unless we have like a ten dollar down open, which I think is incredibly fucking unlikely. You will get a very, 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 very good cross in your exponentials right here. And that's going to likely propel this guy a little bit further. So even 280 while a short term target or, you know, around there, give or take a buck or two. Uh, this thing could, I mean, in the second that it takes out about, two, what is this, this high over here at around 281, don't see anything stopping this from about 286. To, I mean, basically your prior highs, but I'd say 286 first and foremost. Um, so yeah, keep that one in mind. We'll obviously be able to watch that one in real time when it opens up later for some more uh, for some more live stream action fun. But basically, on the lower time frames here for Bitcoin, I think the I think the uh, I, th I think it's quite clear we are brushing up against a pretty decent resistance. I'm not saying that this is the end of the ultimate run, but there are a lot of things in the underlying mark dynamics that do suggest that this is you know pressure city right now. And as long as Bitcoin is below this 30, we could just even call this 4,000 a share. Basically, the daily 89 exponential. Um, I would be looking for a pullback rather than continuation just yet. Uh, I believe our lower time frame oscillators are showing a little bit of divergence. Did we see any on the two hour? Yeah, a little bit on the two hour. What about the three hour? Uh, three hour, a little bit on the three hour. Uh, what about Stokes on the three hour? Three hour for Stokes crossing down. What about four hour? Four hours still going up. So yeah, that's kind of where the inflection point is. Typically when I do start to see my three hours turn around, uh, price action does follow. However, again, I do believe that we probably grind up into the you know mid to low nine, uh, 3900s first. And, uh, and it's gonna, you know, it's gonna spend some time 
time in this area. We just we just had a like a, what a twelve percent day, twelve percent fucking day. It's not just gonna fall over the next day or anything like that. It's gonna it's gonna take probably a while. So that's what I have on my radar right now. That's what I'll be looking for. Um, I'll probably take another scalp uh, in this range. Um, in the meantime, I don't know if you know we might have this happen before uh, before live stream time later tonight. So if it does, I'll probably be taking us you know somewhere somewhere around thirty nine fifty ish, give or take a little bit. Um, and then play it from there. So that's gonna do it for this morning's video. I'll be back on later with some more live stream action, hopefully with a new camera or some or some light dimmers. I've tried putting on wax paper on my lights, and so far it hasn't started a fire, but my God. Hey, what's up, Zeon? Good to meet you, ma'am. Good to have you in here. It hasn't started a fire, but it has absolutely destroyed my eyes. So again, uh, thank you for bearing with me on this one. A little bit of a slower slower speed today as, uh, as I'm coffee-less, but hey. <laughs> It's all for good, my friends. It's all for good. So again, wishing you well on this lovely Tuesday, a nice wet Tuesday, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care.